nothing about AI, not even what AI is. If you are a fresher who does not know Python, Cloud or anything else, or you are experienced who want to change the domain in AI, or just wondering from where to start, then you are at the right place. We are going to discuss AI step by step in a question answer format, so it will be helpful even for your AI interviews. And some of them are real world AI interviews that I personally encountered or by my colleagues, my juniors and some of them are collected from best resources available on the internet. So you will get everything in this video series from concepts to animated explanation and practical demos. I try to explain everything from scratch in this video and still you won't understand anything let me know in the comment section i am super active in the comment section so your every query will be answered and also i go live every day so you can ask me there as well our first question is what is ai some people might be wondering who asks such definition question in interviews nowadays well it is asked to me you need to understand one thing ai is new no one is expert in ai According to studies, to become an expert in anything, you need 10,000 hours to work on it, which is more than 3 years of professional experience and only a few people in the IT industry can claim such experience. And that gives you a golden chance to excel in AI and stay ahead of everyone. So you might think AI is some supercomputer or some software like that, which in a way is true. But just like Linux is technically not an operating system, AI is technically a field of computer science that deals with a set of technologies concerned with building hardware and software or a combination of both that can solve cognitive problems or even tasks that involves data whose scale exceeds what human can analyze. Those who don't know what cognitive tasks are so cognitive tasks are tasks which generally require human intelligence such as learning, create something, image and speech recognition, understanding natural language, text analysis, decision making, problem solving, make predictions and many other intelligent tasks which we generally do as humans. But how we are going to develop self-learning system? Let's understand this with a real life example. Suppose you want to become a baker who can make variety of beautiful cakes without anyone helps. So to do that, we need ingredients. We should know the recipe of a cake to know the overall process of using ingredients. And then we have to bake the cake to get the desired cake. Similarly, the ingredient for AI to create this self-learning system is data. And it needs massive data to learn by itself. And these massive data when grouped into a collection called a data set and to properly utilize these data sets we need logic and procedure that will define how to process these data sets. These procedures are called algorithms. You can compare these algorithms with programming code. Algorithms are applied to a data set to achieve a certain function or purpose to get the desired output and that output is known as AI model which is the output of an algorithm that has been applied to a data set. You can compare AI model with a software program. And to make this AI model, we need to train the AI model using relevant data. The trained model can then be used to make prediction or decision in new and similar situation to solve these cognitive tasks. So a question might be asked in an interview to differentiate between an algorithm and a model. AI algorithm is the set of instructions or rules that guides the AI system on how to perform a task. While the trained instance of the algorithm on a specific data set which can make decision or predict based on the learned pattern to solve cognitive problems without further human intervention is an AI model. AI model can apply different algorithms to relevant data input to achieve the task or output they have been programmed for. Basically the difference is similar to the difference between a recipe of a cake and an actual baked cake. Now these upcoming questions are very important as we are going to discuss about types and stages of AI development and terms like AGI, ASI which you should know even for day to day conversation 
and as an AI engineer, we should know what we are working on and what we are developing. So the first type of AI is Artificial Narrow Intelligence, simply known as Narrow AI, which refers to the ability of AI to perform a narrowly defined task similar to humans or in some cases better than human. But remember, narrow AI can only perform narrowly defined tasks, which means we have to specify tasks very clearly without any error or issue. That's why it is also known as weak AI. However, it is the highest level of AI development that humanity has achieved so far. And every example of AI that you see in the real world falls into this category, including autonomous vehicles and personal digital assistant. That's because even when it seems like AI is thinking for itself in real time, it's actually coordinating several narrow processes and making decisions within a predetermined framework. The narrow AI thinking does not involve consciousness or emotion. ANI can be further classified into two types, reactive machine AI and limited machine AI. So reactive machine AI are considered as the first major stage of AI development that only reacts to different kind of stimuli based on the pre-programmed rules. For instance, IBM's Deep Blue AI, which beat the chess champion Gary Kasparov in 1997, was an example of a reactive machine AI. It does not use memory and thus cannot learn more or enhance its performance with the new data. The second stage of AI development, which we are currently in, is limited memory AI. It can use memory to improve over time by being trained with new data. So all AI you see nowadays, even ChatGPT, is narrow AI in the limited machine AI stage. Second type of AI is artificial general intelligence, in which will come the third stage of AI, theory of mind AI, sometimes called strong AI or human level AI. AGI does not currently exist, but research is ongoing on its possibilities. Even though it is currently out of reality, but all major companies are working toward it. Even recently news came in that the ChatGPT organization OpenAI has achieved ANI secretly. That is why OpenAI has fired its CEO, but no clarification came on that later. So it is still considered out of reality till now. This type of AI will be able to emulate the human mind and will have the decision-making capabilities equal to that of a human. It would be capable of creativity and imagination on par with humans and could take on a far wider range of tasks than narrow AI. And the last type of AI is artificial superintelligence, which will reach the final stage of AI development, self-aware AI. A step above theory of mind ASI describes a mythical machine that is aware of its own existence and can outperform humans in almost every field, including scientific creativity, general wisdom, and social skills. But thankfully, like the theory of mind AI, self-aware AI does not currently exist. And if you are wondering why I said thank you, maybe you need to watch some science fiction movies. I know many people who think AI and ML are the same thing, but they are not the same. While the terms machine learning and artificial intelligence may be used interchangeably, they are different. Thus, the panel may ask this in an interview to test your basic knowledge. Artificial intelligence is a field of computer science that deals with machines that can develop intelligence in systems. Basically, an umbrella term for different methods used to make machine more human-like. Whereas machine learning is one of the many methods that computer system follow to achieve artificial intelligence. If it is asked what is relationship between AI and ML, you can respond that machine learning is one among many other branches of artificial intelligence. While all machine learning activities are AI, all AI activities cannot be called machine learning. Thus, in a mathematical terms, we can say that ML is a subset of AI. Just like we humans can learn by different strategies and techniques, and one of the most effective way of learning for humans is learning through experience. Machine learning is somewhat inspired by experiential learning. Machine learning is the science of developing algorithms and statistical models that computer systems use to perform tasks without explicit programming or instruction, 
instead relying on pattern and inference. As previously discussed, AI must train its model on a data set to learn a new capability or a feature. This process is known as model training. For example, if we want an AI model to detect whether a photo has a cat in it or not, we have to feed a cat photo data set to train our model. And when you use this already trained model to identify cats in new photos, that process is known as model inferencing. So basically, when you use an already trained model on new data to utilize capabilities on which we train our model, it is known as model inferencing. As AI's goal is to make self-learning system that can solve cognitive tasks, while ML goal is to make system that can process large quantities of historical data and identify data patterns. The more data used, the better the model will get. This enables a computer system to continue learn and improve on its own based on the experience, that is to become a self-learning system or to develop artificial intelligence. Another term by which people confuse AI and ML is deep learning. Most people believe that deep learning will lead to AGI or artificial general intelligence. For those who don't know what AGI is, I strictly suggest you guys watch my previous video where I explain it in detail. So deep learning is one of the machine learning techniques that tries to teach machines how to behave like the human brain. Basically, it tries to mimic the human brain. Let's understand this deeply. We need to understand how human brain behaves and learn by its own. Whenever you read a report, watch a movie, drive a car or smell a flower, billions of neurons in your brain processes this information through tiny electric signals. Each neuron processes inputs and the results are output to the next neuron for subsequent processing. Ultimately and instantly producing a business insight, a chuckle, a foot on the brake or a little joy. A human brain contains millions of interconnected neurons that work together to learn and process information. Similarly, in deep learning, artificial neural networks allow digital system to interpret and react to situation in much the same way. Let's understand artificial neural networks deeply. So just like our nervous system, artificial neural network have multiple layers of artificial neurons also known as nodes or perceptrons. These artificial neurons operate similarly to human brain neurons and use for processing data. Interconnected unit of these artificial neurons or nodes are known as deep learning layers. An artificial neural network has several nodes that input data into it. These nodes make up the input layer of the system. After the input layer processes the data, it passes it to the layers further in the artificial neural network and these layers are often known as hidden layers. These hidden layer processes information at different levels adapting their behavior as they receive new information. I demonstrated only two layers here but deep learning networks can have hundreds of hidden layers that they can use to analyze a problem from several different angles. For example, if you give any person an image of unknown animal and tell him to classify, he has to compare it with animals he already know. For example, he would look at the number of legs, does it have a tail or not, what color it is and does it have any special features. Basically, he would try to identify patterns into it. Just like this animal has a trunk, so it could be an elephant. The hidden layers in the deep neural network work in the same way. If a deep learning algorithm is trying to classify an animal image, each of its hidden layers processes a different feature of the animal and tries to accurately categorize it. And the final layer is known as the output layer, which consists of the nodes that output the data. Deep learning models that output yes or no answers have only two nodes in the output layer. On the other hand, those that output a wider range of answers have more nodes. So all these components make an artificial neural network or deep learning network. You might have heard of the term generative AI or Gen AI. As one of the most popular AI right now, ChatGPT is a Gen AI application. Gen AI is a subset of deep learning. So you see how deep artificial intelligence actually is. That's why we are covering all important theoretical concepts 
and soon we will start doing some juicy AI practical projects. As clear from its name, generative AI can generate new content and ideas like conversation, stories, images, videos and music. Generative AI is the next step in the artificial intelligence. You can train it to learn human languages, programming languages, art, chemistry, biology or any complex subject matter. It reuses training data to solve new problems. For example, it can learn English vocabulary and create a poem from the words it processes. Your organization can use generative AI for various purposes like chatbots, media creation and product development and design. Now the question arises, if I want to make an AI application like ChatGPT which can answer almost every subject, do I need to train my AI model on each of these subjects? The answer is not necessary. Instead of training your AI model from scratch, you can use foundational models. All the hard work required for training models has already been done for you so that you can use them out of the box for your use cases or you can further fine tune them according to your specific domains. Let's take our English vocabulary example. When we can directly use a foundational model that is pre-trained on English vocabulary and fine tune specific words like generally instead of hello I use namaste. So I can fine tune my foundational model for that. As clear by its name, they are used as a foundation to develop models for new application. Foundational models are so important that you will start hearing jobs like FMOps engineer or fine tuners in the future. So foundational models are large deep learning neural networks that are pre-trained on massive and broad spectrum of generalized and unlabeled data sets which are generally taken from internet as it has all kinds of data in massive quantities. Due to this, they can do a wide range of tasks such as article summarization, text, image or video generation with high degree of accuracy. As we have covered all the main AI terminologies, it's time for the practical implementation of AI. And we will continue to cover more concepts along with the demo. You can utilize it as a project to showcase your AI and ML skills. As we already know, we require massive data sets for AI and to process them, we will require high-end IT resources to run them, which we will use through cloud. To understand what are IT resources and what is cloud, watch this video. The link will be available in the description where I explain what is cloud as well as IT resources. Using AI in cloud gives you the ability to develop these models with speed. This ability to develop with speed is known as agility. Also the cloud will give you the ability to access virtually unlimited hardware resources to tackle AI models of any size. And this ability to manually increase or decrease resources to meet the predictable workload is known as scalability. And the ability to do the same automatically is known as elasticity. If you want to understand these terms and all other cloud terms with example, then you can watch this video. Link will be available in the description. Another benefit we get with the cloud is we can utilize AI services directly using APIs and pre-trained model, saving you a lot of cost and time to train the model. So in this demo, we will use AWS as our cloud service provider. We will also do demos on Azure and Google Cloud but in the further videos. Also you can save a lot of money by creating an AWS free tier account. I explain end to end step by step how to create a free tier account in this video. Link will be available in the description. In the next video we will do AI demos. If you have watched till here I have only one request from you. Drop a heart in the comment section to let me know you have watched till end. I hope before the next video you will watch the suggested video of what is cloud and cloud concept video where I explain them with the simple examples so it will be easier for you to understand further. Thank you so much for your appreciation. Next video will be out soon.